us were sitting uh, where there's big rocks and stones, something that you have created. Um, do you want to talk about the medicine wheel that you have created here in the stones? So up to this point, we've been pretty much talking about just the individual and creating a, a cocoon, a healing presence or space um, with a client. Um, most traditions, uh, when I started looking into my heritage, so I have Celtic because of Irish and I, and I have uh, Native American, I found out they all had medicine wheels. It's like, well, what, what are these for? And I looked at various ones. So there's, there's the uh, variety of medicine wheels, but the ones that became important to me is it just, just the one that's the four directions is the uh, uh, primary place. And what does the medicine wheel create? It creates a container, an energetic container. Now, literally or mentally, we can say it creates one thing, but I, I'm going to say it's also energetically, emotionally, and spiritually. So the east is the rising sun. It's about courage and presence. The south is about magic and respect for yourself and others. The west is about compassion, it's the feminine energy, so the masculine and feminine are in the east and the west. These are all traditional things most people know. And then the north are the ancestors. And the ancestors, how does that work? Well, in modern family therapy, they talk about something that can happen like the Holocaust will affect seven generations. So something today, the south is the future. So the future is the children, the children that are coming, my generations after me. All the things that I learned from the seven generations before me come out of the north. So what can that look like? Well, that can be uh, all sorts of things. I'll give you an example. My father could, uh, I thought this was normal. Um, he had the capacity of getting fully present and heal a burn literally right in front of your face. It would go away. Um, a lot of native prayers and rituals um, were, I love them because they're basic in the name, they just say it what it is. So the prayer was blowing out the fire. And he would blow lightly and say this prayer and people not even noticing because he's talking to them and having them tell stories to him and he's listening to them and they frequently would say, is, you know, you're ever going to get around to healing me? And he'd, he'd say, well, what needs healed? And they'd, Say, so, well, my burn, and they look at it, and it was gone. Um, the story I can tell you about that for myself, and I thought this, everybody's dad did this. I was, you know, not a kid. Uh, I was about 12 year old, and I loved to eat. So I learned to, if you love to eat, you learn to cook, you get to eat more what you want. So I was notorious for uh, uh, making fried shrimp. And one day I was making some fried shrimp and uh, um, the grease is boiling. And uh, uh, somebody called my name as I was dropping the shrimp into the, the grease and my hand went right into the grease. And you know, instantly burned and turned into blisters and stuff. And so I went over to my dad and, and it was very rare because on a Saturday my dad worked all the time. And uh, very rare, but he, he uh, was home that Saturday. And I went over to him to have him burn, uh, to blow the fire out. And uh, as, as he often would do, uh, because you weren't paying attention, uh, he said, called me a dumbass, because I should have been paying attention. If you're gonna put your hand over hot grease, you pay attention. And he was always focused that way. And, and so I realized he had this thing also about being present. And I didn't realize that until much later. But he blew the fire out, and five minutes later, I was cooking my shrimp and pain-free, and all the redness was going away, and it was by the end of the day, it was gone. So that was normal for me. So the medicine wheel uh, is interesting um, in a couple of ways. Besides the fact that almost all um, traditions, indigenous cultures had some variation of it, and they all had the four elements. Uh, Africa, certain tribes in Africa added a fifth element, which was metal. They had access to it, so they considered it a, a critical aspect of life. But medicine wheels generally are the four directions. So you have the four directions, the four seasons, the four elements, everything's in fours. And that drives all uh, uh, cosmology or spirituality of almost all the traditions. 
The interesting part about it was, though, is, is I'm reading Carl Jung, and he's, and I've discovered that Carl Jung spent at least two years with the Navajo and learned the medicine wheel, which later became his theory of the quadrinity. And quadrinity says that we have four parts. We have a masculine, a feminine, something from the ancestors, and something from it that d d develops the future. Uh, Robert Monroe went one step further in saying is, is that we have we learn to be a warrior, which is to be present. We learn to be a magician, which is to manipulate reality, whether it's reading, writing, arithmetic, how we think, carpentry, take your pick, but it's magic. We have to learn how to do it. Uh, then we go to uh, learn to be in relationship, and there's variations of all this, but the relationship's idea of compassion is we learn to have compassion for ourselves and others. And then the last part is, is generosity, is if we reach the peak or we crescendo into an integrated human being at the end, we learn generosity, which generosity basically means is that we learn to create and influence our, let's call kingdom, which is our family, but we're open to outcomes. So in other words, if, I'm a, if I show courage, uh, respect, and compassion, my generosity is, is to teach those things to them from their center of how to be a good human being, but also know they have to find their individual way because we're all individuals. So the medicine wheel is, is a very powerful tool. Um, it's used in, in the healing den because it's another container. And when I show people how to use it, it becomes a roadmap, so to speak, of I'm always in my center and I have access to the masculine and feminine, my past and my future, but it's always the point of power is in the center. So that's why the medicine wheel is so critically important, and I teach a variety of ways to use it uh, to support them. But again, it's a container. It's a, if I am fully present and I'm utilizing this, it's very powerful. Now, a more advanced aspect of the medicine wheel goes into deeper spiritual traditions of all natures, which says, if I am fully present, the masculine energy and the feminine energy will come together like DNA or like the caduceus in the healing fields where the entwined masculine and feminine come together, which is healing, and the past and the future collapse into the present, which means in that moment I can heal, I can have insights, I can change because I'm clear about myself because I'm, I'm fully present. I'm not trying to do something or I'm not receiving something. I'm not being influenced from the past and I'm not being called to do something in the future. I am just simply here. And it's a very, very powerful understanding that when people grasp that concept, they begin to realize that the, these medicine wolves were very advanced theories and, and modalities for the indigenous cultures.